Hello, welcome to lesson 4.1 on bivariate distributions of the discrete type. In this video we will learn about what a bivariate distribution is and why it's important. We will discuss joint probability mass functions, marginal probability mass functions, and review the idea of um, events and random variables being independent or dependent. So let's motivate the idea of using bivariate distributions and why they're important with a little example. Last spring in one of my classes as students were taking an exam I recorded which row they were sitting in. There were six rows in the classroom and I recorded which row. After they took the test I also recorded their test score, their grade. Now I can consider these variables independently of each other. If I look at the distribution of row for the entire class, I can see that the students were pretty uniformly distributed among the six rows. And because I'm looking at row without being interested in um, grade as well, this is called a marginal distribution of row. I can also look at the distribution of the grades without considering at all where people were sitting. So this is called a marginal distribution of grade and as I can see, you can see here it's kind of a skewed left distribution with a peak looks like somewhere in the mid 80s. But if I want to know if there's a relationship between row and grade looking at those two marginal distributions does not help me answer that question. Instead, what I really need to do is I really need to look at a bivariate distribution. A distribution that's looking at both of the variables together. And that's kind of um, displayed here in this scatter plot. Looking here, now I can see a lot more information. I can see that as people sit in rows that are further back, their average score seems to be a bit lower. I can also see that in the front rows there's less variation in scores than there are in the rows further back. Because I'm looking at both grade and row together, this is reflecting the joint distribution of row and grade. can also come back to that idea that we had in chapter one about independent or dependent events looking at these random variables to say are they independent or dependent. Now if they were independent what that would mean is that knowing which row somebody is sitting in doesn't change the distribution of the grades but I can see that that's not true. So these two variables, row and grade, are not independent and in fact are dependent. So in chapter four we are going to start this week by looking at bivariate distributions of the discrete type. Next week we'll be looking at lessons 4.2 and 4.3 where we'll learn about special expectations and the correlation coefficient for bivariate distributions and we'll also look at conditional distributions. The following week we will look at lessons 4.4 and 4.5 which focus on bivariate distributions of the continuous type and in particular one special distribution of the continuous type which is the bivariate normal distribution. So let's formally define what it means to be a discrete bivariate distribution. Um, if x and y need to both be discrete random variables and S is the corresponding two-dimensional sample space. It's going to consist of pairs, X, Y. The joint probability mass function, also called the joint PMF, we give it the notation little f of X, Y, and it tells us 
the probability that x takes on the value little x and y takes on the specific value little y. Note that it is a probability mass function, so all of the probabilities need to be greater than or equal to zero. And if we take the all of the probabilities for the entire two-dimensional sample space and add them together, they need to sum to one. So I'm going to give an example. Say we're choosing two cards without replacement from a deck of 52. If the random variable x is the number of kings and the random variable y is the number of queens in the two cards that are chosen, we're going to try to find the probability mass function little f of x and y. So the first thing to do is figure out what our sample space is going to look like. We know that the number of kings, since I'm choosing two cards, is going to be 0, 1, or 2. And similarly, the number of queens has to be 0, 1, or 2. However, not all of these um, x-y combinations are possible because x plus y cannot be more than 2. So these turquoise squares highlight the possible values of our xy pair. And to find the probability mass function, I'm going to find the probability that each of these combinations occurs. So, how do I find my probability mass function f of xy? Well, I know that there are 52 choose 2 total ways that I can pick two cards without replacement from the deck of 52 cards. And I want to figure out how many of them will result with x kings and y queens. There are four choose x ways that we can choose x out of the four kings. There are four choose y ways that we can choose y out of the four queens. And then there are 44 cards left over from which we are going to choose 2 minus our total number of kings and queens. Now if I evaluate this function for each of these xy pairs, you can start with 0, 0, plug in 0 for x, 0 for y, and I get the probability of 0, 0 at 0.7134. And similarly, I can plug in 0 for x, 1 for y, and I find the probability of 0, 1 is 0.1327. And I can similarly do this for all of the other values of x and y. So that's my probability mass function. Now a marginal probability mass function. If x and y have a joint PMF, little f of xy, with a sample space s, the probability mass function of x all on its own is called the marginal probability mass function of x. And we use the notation f sub x of x. Tells me the probability that x takes on value little x. And we can find this probability for each value of x by taking f of xy for each possible value that y can take on and adding them together. So we're going to sum f of xy for all the different values of y. Let's see this in an example because it's actually quite straightforward. Let's find the marginal distribution of x. To find the probability that x takes on the value 0, that could be 0, 0, 0, 1, or 0, 2. So I'm going to add those probabilities together. I get 0 0.8506, and that's my marginal probability that x is equal to 0. If I want to find the probability that x is equal to 1, I add the probability of 1, 0 plus the probability of 1, 1 and get 0 0.1448.
and then the probability that x is equal to 2, there's only one way that can happen, it has to be 2, 0, and that has probability 0 0.0045. Uh, completely similarly, we can also talk about the probability mass function of y alone, which is called the marginal probability mass function of y, and it's given the notation f sub y of y. And once again, instead now instead of summing over all the values of y, we're summing over all of the values of x to find the probability that y equals y. So here, if I want to find my marginal distribution of y, I'm going to add a cross for all the values of x and get my probability mass function. Now x and y are independent of each other if and only if the joint probability mass function f of xy is equal to m the multiplication of the marginal distribution of x times the marginal distribution of y. And if x and y are not independent, then we call them dependent. So let's take a quick look. So in our example, we want to know, are the number of kings and the number of queens independent? Well, let's take a look at just one of these points. Is our joint probability that x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 2 equal to the probability that x is equal to 0 times the probability that y is equal to 2? Well, the probability that x is 0 and y is 2 is 0 0.0045. And if I multiply these other two probabilities together, I get 0 0.0038. These are not equal, which means that the variables x and y are not independent, which the x and y are dependent variables. Next week we're going to look at special mathematical expectations when working with bivariate distributions. We are also going to look at conditional probability mass functions. I hope that this video is helpful. If you find that you have questions, please let me know. Be happy to help you.